So, after finishing Nino Kuni, uh, I guess the logical progression from that was to tackle another game that I've been meaning to play, and that would be Persona 5. I have uh, the Persona series, of which I am very fond of. And while I was playing it, one thing really struck me as odd, and that was just how ridiculous Goro looks in that mask. I mean, I get that it's supposed to be, uh, what should we call it? Tengu or something from Japanese folklore. I'm not too familiar, but it very much looks ridiculous. I mean, I have to do some more research on it. I have no idea what the original intents were, but I always saw Goro as this sort of foil to Joker. The white against the dark. The more Robin Hoodish righteous one out of them. He's supposed to be the outsider. And I thought that while his design does do a very good job of communicating that, it's a good design, no doubt, that mask freaks me out on several levels. And so, I guess I just wanted to take my hand on redesigning it. And while I'm having a little fun of that, I thought I'd play around with his costume a bit. Goro is actually one of my favorite characters. I guess because he's a little detective boy. He's like Naoto, but a dude. Aside from that, he is, you know, pretty pretty amusing, pretty entertaining. Um, he's powerful. I like him as a fighter. He's definitely one of the more useful ones. I'm very happy to have him. And I can understand why he was the last one to join. I mean, something that powerful. I want to make sure that you save it for the last. It's for last. Uh, speaking of which, I haven't finished it, so if I say something stupid, that's probably why. Oh, so I made some references based off of uh, different types of mythological creatures, angels, Tengu, uh, plague doctors, stuff like that. I'm trying to encompass this sort of rebellious nature because, uh, according to Mona, the form that you take in the metaverse is based off of what you believe a rebel is. And considering the type of character who Goro is, it was difficult for me to find a good balance between creating something original that isn't just a uh, derivative of his actual costume, and also preserving the qualities that make him him. They, like I said, the original costume does captures that really well. Um, the mask freaks me out, but you know, I'm, I'm sure they, I'm sure it makes a lot more sense in Japan. Um, so I don't know too much about the Tengu, but I looked at a picture and they kind of look like angels, sort of like the Japanese equivalent of angels. So I decided to take Goro's concept and try to come at it as if he were modeled after an angel rather than a raven or a Tengu or a bird or whatever it is. Um, and I came up with something that's a little bit more reminiscent of the original Maybe not the original, but of the different iterations of the angel from Persona. And you'll see, it's actually just uh, some lady who's got black stripes over her eyes and her chest. And there isn't really too much to the design, but, it, but I enjoyed this idea of the eyes being blocked out by a single black stripe and him not being able to see. That appealed to me, so I wanted to run with that sort of concept. So you can see me breaking away from the plague mask or the bird mask, trying to make heads or tails of this. I'm gonna be honest, the only reason I made this was because I was playing Persona, and then my brother has the PS4. So I was playing the Persona, and then he had company over, and then he kicked me out, and now I'm sad because I didn't get to finish it. I'm really close, too. Really sad. I wanted to finish it before school got back in session. Oh well, it's on the point. So after I settle on a design that I think I'm happy with, I take to a gesture sketch and I try to block in my volumes. I've been really trying to push having a less sketchier style just to encourage confidence in my lines. And while that makes the sketches look nicer, it also means that uh, well, they come out rather awkward looking, simply because I'm not very good. <laughs> I have a lot of difficulty visualizing something, and I also have a lot of difficulty rotating 3D objects in physical space, which is why I tend to have a lot of issues with perspective and foreshortening, which is something I tried to um, 
tackle in this sketch of Goro. And I, I go back and forth for a while. This sketch itself was the only time-consuming part of this little mini-project, and if I had gone with a simpler pose, it would have been done a lot quicker, but I also would not have gotten the practice with the foreshortening. It was very frustrating, but, you know, frustration's a good thing. I guess since I haven't beaten Persona yet, this is a this is a great chance to air all of my theories on what's gonna happen. Um, I don't know. Is Koro, is Koro evil? I'm not sure. He has this thing. There's this little section in the game uh, before he joins your party where you guys are talking, and then he uh, something happens where it implies that he heard Morgana. And the only people that can hear the talking cat are the people that have been into the, uh, the metaverse. Which means he's been to the metaverse. He's either been to the metaverse before, and he's lied about it. Or he's been to the metaverse, and he doesn't remember it. I was having so much difficulty getting a good pose with a more realistic style. But I went for something a little bit more cartoony to try and encapsulate the pose, and then I tried building off of that. It was a lot easier this time around. Cartoon anatomy is so much easier. The perspective on his hands gave me a lot of trouble. Um, mostly the four one, and even looking at it now, it looks really awkward to me. Eventually, I think I just fatigued and went with something. I don't know. Just unless I look at a reference, I'm not too sure how I would have come up with something like that from imagination. But oh well. I mean, it gets the job done. You can see what he's doing, at the very least. I always find myself dissatisfied with the faces, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Those tend to be the main focal point of any type of piece of art, so I guess it's good to be obsessed with getting it right. Looking at his now, I think his hands might be too big, since I shrank his head, now the proportions are off. This is me attempting to rotate the shoe in 3D space in my head, and I'm trying to figure out um, how I should draw it to make it look more correct, because having it as it was before looked off to me for reasons I couldn't quite ascertain. This is the part where I start to fatigue, and then I just get straight to color. A note on color. Everyone in the Phantom Thieves group generally follows the same color scheme. They have black, red, white, or, you know, some sort of gray. And then they have their signature color on their gloves. So, um, Ryuji has yellow, Queen has... Actually, Queen doesn't have it, her gloves are white, which threw me off, because they follow that, the, that convention for the original three, the original four, and then they kind of lose it, they go kind of ham with the designs with the later three, which I guess is supposed to show that the latter three aren't 
has much 18% of thieves? I'm not sure. No. Anyways, the point was, Goro's main thing is that he's all white instead of all black. Which A, is not very good if you want to blend into shadows. And B, helps to distinguish him from the rest of the team, to show him as an outsider, which is very important. It also lends itself to that more angelic, righteous nature that he has. Goro. Came out alright, I think. <laughs>